Hello friends, this is Dr. Crad, and today I want to show you a different kind of video. Not every surgery is Instagram worthy, and while I do love the light adjustable lens, today I want to share some complications that can occur during insertion. In most cataract surgeries, a single piece acrylic lens is injected into the eye. The light adjustable lens is a three piece silicone lens, and the design of the inserter predisposes it to certain challenges with certain eyes, specifically with floppy iris syndrome. So here's a case with a floppy iris, and you can see the iris flopping around. The patient's pupillary dilation was good at the beginning of the case, but then it kept coming down throughout the surgery. And here you can see the iris actually try to prolapse out of the incision, right here. At this point, you want to turn off irrigation and allow the pressure of the eye to decrease before you come out of the incision. And here I will show you the tip of the LAL injector, and you can see that there are two arches that come together to form a slit. The reason for the slit is to allow some expansion as the IOL is inserted, but the edge of the inserter is not smooth. These are squared off edges. And the problem here, as you'll see, is when you go inside, especially if there's any floppiness to the iris, these arches and the slit can scoop the iris. You'll see as it tries to go forward. See how the arches are pulling the iris centrally, and some of the iris is getting caught in the slit. This can become a problem in the very shallow eyes. And you can see the leading haptic coming out pointed towards the iris, pointy tip first. And when it comes out, it might even try to point posterior. So you're, you wanna rotate clockwise. But as you do that, sometimes the wing tip is bumping into the speculum or bumping into the prominent eyebrow or prominent cheek. And so you're trying to rotate, but sometimes you have that obstacle there. The optic springs open very quickly. That's the nature of silicone optics. Now that the leading haptic is in the bag, you can use any instrument to dial it in. Every time you insert an LAL, if you go take a look at the inserter, at the injector, the cartridge, you'll see that at the base of the slit, it's bulging out because it expands as the IOL is going in. And here I'm gonna show you that as you try to rotate the injector clockwise, see how the wingtip can bump the speculum or the cheek. And so sometimes it's kind of hard to rotate it as much as you want, um, depending on the patient's anatomy. Here is the uh, tip of the injector from a typical single piece acrylic inserter. This happens to be the J and J one. And you see how it's round, there's no slit, it's smooth edge. And as you go in, there's no arch or no slit that can scoop up the iris. And even if it did, even if there was prolapse of the iris, the IOL comes in kind of shoulder first, and so it's blunt. And so as you go in, it tends to glide over any uh, floppy iris. Here I'll show you another case where somebody had some floppy iris. And this is the single piece acrylic injector. And as the inserter is put in, the iris wants to go inside the injector, right? But because the leading part of the IOL and haptic it, they are blunt, they can just glide right over. So here I'm starting to insert and it will just glide right over. It won't pierce the iris. The iris really doesn't get in the way. Here I am uh, inspecting the injector to make sure that the leading haptic is not kinked and it's going through the uh, tunnel of the cartridge. And 
as we go through, you'll kind of see how the iris wants to get trapped in this slit and go in. So I'm kind of pushing it out. I want to get the slit past the pupil border because that's the key. You need to really get the base of the slit past the pupil border so you make sure you're in enough. So I'm injecting some extra viscoelastic just to create a little bit of space. This is a shallow eye uh, with some posterior pressure. Uh, everything kept wanting to come forward. And see how the haptic went through the slit posteriorly? It's going all the way posterior and it's kind of twisted and I can't rotate. And so I'm meeting some resistance. And so eventually just comes out. And I'm going to try again. I'm going to inspect the lens and then reload it and then try to inject again. So because I lost some viscoelastic, I'm going to put some more in the eye. And then we reloaded the lens after seeing that there are no kinks in the haptics. I'm going to inspect again and you'll see how the slit, the base of the slit is bulging out a little bit. So we want to make sure that this clears the pupil uh, border. So I, I get it out of the way there. And I insert it, make sure that it's clear. I'm trying to rotate clockwise a little bit. You see the speculum move a little bit because it's in the way. But fortunately, the leading haptic is in the bag properly. And now I just have to dial this lens in using a second instrument. Good. Here's another patient with floppy iris. The pupil had started out dilated better than this, but then throughout the case it went down. And the iris tissue is getting caught in the slit of the injector. So you rotate it clockwise to make sure that the leading haptic clears the iris. And then you just have to dial it in with a, another instrument. Here's another example. In this case, the patient doesn't have floppy iris, but they are a hyperope, a high hyperope, getting a refractive lens exchange, and the iris gets caught in the slit of the injector. I just make sure to clear it before I insert the lens. Most of us are used to single piece acrylics that open up slowly. When you first see the silicone optic pop open, it's, uh, it takes some getting used to, that's for sure. So you just dial in the trailing haptic like usual. So the reason I recorded all these insertions of LELs is because something really bad happened to me in one of my cases. And here it is. As you can see at six o'clock, there's an LPI. This is a shallow eye. And there was a lot of posterior pressure with iris tissue prolapsing through the injector crowding the leading haptic. And I didn't realize it, but the leading haptic pierced the peripupillary iris tissue. I had the nursing staff take a picture because at this particular center, they don't have recording equipment. And it was a day that I just did not bring my own camera. So I had a couple options of how to deal with this. Either dial the lens clockwise and rotate the trapped haptic out of the iris, but there was so much posterior pressure and shallowing of the chamber, I was worried that while rotating it, I would tear the capsule or tear the iris root. So I decided to just use intraocular scissors and snip the trapped iris tissue since it was only a small amount by the pupil border. This is the way the eye looked after surgery. This is with the pupil dilated. It's much more noticeable when the pupil is not dilated, especially in this light colored eye but I could not suture this at the time of surgery because I needed the pupil to dilate for the light adjustment treatments. Now I figured if the patient had symptoms later, I can go back in after the light adjustments and put in a suture to round uh, this pupil and close the gap. Fortunately, the patient did very well. 
they were not having any dysphotopsia. They were seeing excellent 2020 vision. And so there was no need at this point to go back in and suture it. But now that the light adjustments are done, if it ever did bother them in the future, if they did start noticing dysphotopsias, we would go back in and suture this iris. In conclusion, I'm just kidding. We're not done yet. Here's another complication that can happen. So I inspect the injector and leading haptic looks good. Everything's looking good. And let's see if you can catch it. All right. So notice the leading haptic is pointing posteriorly, which is not ideal. So rotate it. Do you notice it? If you didn't notice it, you're going to notice it now. Look at that kinked trailing haptic. So this can happen two ways. Number one, the tech, if they did not put the trailing haptic up and out of the way of the plunger during the loading, or if they did put it properly, but as they advanced the lens, they hesitated, they reversed the plunger and then re-advanced the plunger, that would be enough to trap the trailing haptic underneath the plunger. So it's very important that when your tech or you, you are advancing the plunger, you do not reverse and then go advance the plunger again. You will kink the haptic. And so here I am debating, do I cut this IOL out? Do I try to straighten the haptic? And let's see what I end up doing here. Vote, do I cut it out or do I leave it? What would you do? I'm going to speed up the video here because of how much I value your time. And so I'm going to play with it a little bit. I like to try to fix things. So to me, that looks a little bit too short. I don't like it. I'm worried that the lens is going to decenter. I think that the haptic needs to be longer prior to it starting to curve. So I'm just going to straighten it out a bit. Worst case scenario, I will cut out the lens trying to see if I can make the shape opposite and symmetrical to the other haptic. And I decide that I am going to insert it, and then I'll see how it centers. And fortunately, it stays perfectly centered, and this patient did excellent. There is no shifting of his lens. But we're not done yet. So <laughs> here we go inserting a LAL and initially it starts going forward. But if all of a sudden it stops, yet it's still rotating, then your technician just did not lock the cartridge in. So there's a little dial that you lock the cartridge into the inserter and that was not locked. So as I was injecting, the whole cartridge was, cartridge was coming out. So now we reloaded the lens and locked the cartridge and then it went in normally. So that's something else that can happen. I hope that by sharing these challenges I've had, this could prevent a complication in your patients. My takeaway message is to make sure that the slit, uh, the base of the slit passes the pupillary border before you inject the lens. And so you have to insert the uh, injector fairly far into the eye to clear the pupil border. Make sure that your technicians, if they're loading the lens for you, that they do not trap that trailing haptic underneath the plunger. My wish list from RX site would be that the next iteration of the injector has smoother edges, not like a square edge. I think if it's smoother, it won't get caught uh, in the iris tissue. If they can avoid a slit, uh, altogether, that would be fantastic. Um, I wish it was preloaded. I wish that the leading haptic can come out curved. Obviously, with PMMA, it can kink, so they might have to consider a different material. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, peace.